All right, everyone, we're back. We're back for the third video. It's been like a week, but we made it. We're back. I literally just woke up, so hopefully I'm not going to be a little bit too rusty for this, but we should be all right. So for today, for the most part, what I want to do is go over, I think, textures and animations, while at the same time, we're going to be starting the development process of the Ultimate Jumper Extreme, the Unknown Truth. Oh yeah, look at that name. That screams fun right there. So let's go into our project. Let's just open up Unity, our Unity 2017.3, or whichever version you downloaded or have. Okay, go into the game or the project that you created. Let Unity do its thing. Open up that beast. And then basically what I'm going to do is just go over what we went over or went through a few days ago, about a week ago. <clears throat> so if you remember, if you were following the tutorials, last time we went over terrain. So the actual development of a terrain, sculpting the terrain, smoothing it out, adding textures, multiple textures, and uh, adding a <clears throat> first person character. So our player just over here. All right. So today, what we're going to be basically going over is the textures, a little bit more textures and a bit of animations. And hopefully we'll start putting together the game. Well, actually, no, we will be putting together the game, but we'll see how much, uh, how far into that we will get. So if you have this all opened up, just delete everything. Okay, we're going to start from scratch. So just highlight it in your hierarchy or your inventory, you could call it. Hit delete or just right click and hit delete. Okay, leave the main camera. If you accidentally deleted it, just go to game object and hit camera over here. All right, so we're starting new. Blank canvas, absolutely nothing here. And we're gonna kind of start developing that into something. Something absolutely freaking beautiful. All right. So, if you remember, one of the first things you generally want to do is create a land, somewhere to walk on, somewhere to step on, all right? So let's create a terrain. So we're going to go to, hold on, let me just quickly do something here real quick. Just so I should have done this before. <clears throat> do, do, do. No, that is not it. Could have sworn shit. There we go. I'm just going to enable the mouse thing, which shows where my mouse is whenever I press control devices. Oops, mouse. Pointer options. There we go. Apply. So now it just shows where the mouse is. All right. So back to it. <clears throat> so we're going to create over here in the hierarchy. All right, right over there. And we are going to create a terrain. So go to 3D objects and select terrain just over here. Okay, so we have our terrain. You could also go to game object here at the top and select 3D object and terrain. Whichever is easier for you, it doesn't matter. So we got our terrain, you can rename it whatever you want. First thing you wanna do is disable static. So just at the very, very right here, right over there, just Disable that. We don't have to worry about static. Not right now, at least. <clears throat> so we got our terrain. Massive, massive ass terrain here. Okay, we're going to want to uh, scale it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. So do you remember what we did last video? with When it comes to the actual land setting or the terrain setting, just at the very right here, this little cogwheel has terrain settings. Okay, we want to go into that and we're going to want to alter some pieces of data here. Hopefully, hopefully, you guys went over this. Hopefully, you guys did some of these things on your own practice, kind of um, screwed around with Unity a little bit to get a little bit of a, more of a feel for it. That'd be absolutely nice. So, let's make it 150. That seems like a reasonable number. Terrain width, 150. Terrain length, 150. Whoops, not 1,000. 150, so just over here. <clears throat> Leave the height. Height isn't relevant right now for us, at least. And here we got terrain. Okay. The lights appear to be on. 
so the actual light rendering appears to be on in the scene so we we're gonna want to turn that off just over here at the top of the gameplay screen just hit that like button if you have that on just keep things nice and clean so once again we have our terrain here uh so if you recall what we're doing is creating a jump quest kind of a jump style game jumping from platform to platform while collecting i don't know some minor experience objects and being faced with death triggers so where if you touch those triggers you die i kind of want to make the environment one of those checkered environments so i want to make all the textures around us because what we're going to do what i'm going to do in my version of the game though at least is create walls okay so completely encompass this area in walls as well as the top and the texture for that so we're going to go into google now I'm going to find a quick texture i'm going to go to textures.com royalty free textures and white checkers hopefully that comes up with something no oh. hmm grid i think grid is the word for it yeah so something like this but actually nice <laughs> let's see what comes up if we put in white Yeah, so looking for something like this, this background over here. Just purely plain would be nice. But it doesn't look like I will find one so easily here. So I guess I'll just scrap that for now. And I will pick a random texture here that might look nice. Oh, like this right here. This looks quite nice. All right. So I'm going to download this texture. I'm going to use this as my uh, floor, perhaps my wall ceilings and whatnot. I'm going to download it. Okay. Wherever I saved it, I'm going to put it on my desktop into my textures folder, which we created in the last video, or last or the first video specifically for our textures. So oops. let's call it the tiles for now. And that's our textures. So we already have a couple textures that we did. We've worked with a few uh, about a week ago. Okay, we're gonna wanna put it into the game. Okay, so let's go to assets. Let's go to our textures folder here in assets. If you don't know how to get to here, just at the very, very, very uh, left here, just click on the little assets section here. That brings you to the very, very beginning of your folders. So we go to textures and just drag and drop it wherever you saved it into this little area here. You can put it wherever you want, honestly, but I'm trying to keep things a little bit more organized because like I said, uh, it can get a little cluttered eventually. So we're gonna apply this tiles texture to our floor or our terrain. Okay, if you remember how to do that, click on the terrain, make sure it's highlighted in your hierarchy. And at the very right here in the middle option, we have a paint texture. So we're gonna click it. Okay, and we're gonna go to edit textures just below that. And we're gonna add a texture. We're going to drag and drop our tiles into the first one to the left, the 2D texture. Okay. And we're going to add it. Looks relatively nice, honestly. I don't think it needs scaling. But if it appears very large and gross, just go to Edit Textures. Again, Add Texture. And just alter the X and Y values over here. Okay. Honestly, perhaps I'll just leave it at 10. That seems... A little more reasonable and you'll see that it'll scale down a bit okay and that's about it that's our land if you want if you want to be fancy you can go to the sculpt one okay raise and lower and just build it if you want if that if, that, if you fancy that <laughs> but we're not gonna do that we're gonna keep it nice and simple just create platforms death platforms rotational platforms and eventually add some script and then make thing make this quite literally the ultimate jumper extreme the unknown truth okay so we got our land let's get our character in here as well okay so on the search just over here first person okay first controller go to the folder just over here okay go to prefabs prefabs is the actual object itself and the one the very first one fps controller don't worry about the rigid body one right beside it drag and drop it to the scene Okay, then go to it. So scroll with your mouse towards it. 
Okay, click it in the hierarchy. Go to the move tool just above here and raise them just above the land. All right, that's that. Okay, we wanna make sure that we don't have two audio listeners in the scene. So if you click on the first person controller here in your hierarchy, click on the arrow, because this is parented. The actual camera is parented to the actual controller, so the actual cylinder itself. As you see, there's a cylinder. What that green thing is the actual collider of the cylinder. Okay. And then, <clears throat> first person character, we're gonna click on that. That's its actual camera. You see it has an audio listener just over here. Okay, we only want one audio listener. We don't want two. So let's make sure our, because so for the most part, the audio listener will be on the cameras as default in Unity. You can honestly put them wherever you want, but when you start up Unity, it will be on the cameras. Okay, we'll go to our main camera here, make sure it doesn't have one. And mine is disabled from the last video, so that's good. So make sure the main camera one is disabled. Okay, we only want the one enabled on our first person controller over here. Uh, while we're at it, let's rename the first person controller. So we're gonna click it, the main body of it, and just rename it to player. Keep it simple. Whoops. There we go. So we got our player now, and now we could actually play the game. So we're gonna click play. And there we go, we got sound. You can jump with shift, run with uh, shift, and simply just move around. We have our nice tile here. It looks actually pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. And that's that. So we textured our terrain, okay? No big deal. <clears throat> now let's make it look a little bit nicer. So let's go back to the uh, first folder of our assets. Let's just go to our assets and let's go to our textures once more, okay? Let's create a new folder in this area. So just right click, create folder. We'll call it tiles because we're gonna have multiple tiles now. Okay, once again, our main goal is to keep things relatively organized. So drag and drop the tiles texture that we just had into the tiles folder. This could be different depending on what texture you actually chose from the beginning. Once again, I chose tiles. You could have chose whatever you want. Tiles, so we got that now. Click it, make sure it's clicked. Okay, go to edit, just at the top here, and click duplicate. We want two tiles now, okay? Tiles one, tiles original. As you have it clicked, okay, the, our, our second tiles, the new one, go to the very right here, okay, just over here where we have the actual settings. Click on texture type, just over here, and we're gonna change that to a normal map, okay? And click apply. All right. Uh, perhaps we could all see, yeah, click on create from grayscale as well. And then you'll see bumpiness up here. Decrease that to about 0 0.3, I suppose, would be nice, or around there at least. 0 0.3, 0 0.03, my bad. Then click apply once more. Okay, you will see what this does. It kind of, it raises, it makes the texture itself more alive. It raises it, makes it look more 3D rather than purely flat and boring. In lack of, in lack of other words, but we have our um, normal map here now. So this texture is an actual normal map. Okay, we're gonna click on the terrain now, click on our land. We're gonna go to our texture. We're gonna go to edit textures and then edit texture again. And you'll see now we have normal. Okay, what we're gonna to wanna to do in this case now is take our tiles, the normal map version of it, drag and drop it into the normal section. And instantaneously there, you will see that our texture rises. It becomes far more 3D than what it normally would be. Apply it. Okay, so once again, in comparison to what it used to be, I can't really see it here without light. You need light to shine on this to actually see it more accurately, but you see that it has raised. It raised quite aggressively. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is click on our normal map again, go to our settings and decrease our bumpiness. If you see we raise our bumpiness far too much, it'll just look gross. <laughs> Maybe gross, I don't know. Depends on who you are, I suppose. But 
we're going to decrease it to, let's see, 0 0.12, I suppose. Apply it. Ah, uh, let's make it 0 0.20. 0 0.020. Apply. And there we go. That seems reasonable right there. Not too much, not too little, just right. Okay, while we're at it, let's add that light component so we could actually see the effect of the normal map in game. So we're going to go to game object again at the top here. And we're going to go to light. And we're going to create a directional light. Okay, so click that. And now we can enable the light component or the light rendering. So just here once again, where we were before, just click on that little light icon over there. Okay, that'll show what the game looks like in game as the light is actually turned on while you're editing. This could prove challenging on your computer. So if it is, if you do experience some lag or some performance drops, uh, just click on the light once more and just disable it so you could actually work in peace. <laughs> so we got our directional light. Let's drag and drop it at the top here. So just highlight it, move it until you see that little line above the main camera and just put it to the top there. Okay, it doesn't do really anything, just keeping it organized, I suppose. Um, while you have directional light selected, Let's go to our settings for the directional light here at the very right. And let's decrease our intensity to 0 0.5. Okay, we don't want it too bright. And then I'll start the game again and see what it looks like. All right, not bad. You have a moving area now. It's, it's a running simulator, running and jumping simulator. You could, you could quite literally sell that, sell it, make money. Become famous, and yeah, that's your running. That's, that's it. That's the end of the tutorial. We created a running simulator. No, no, we're not done. We're not, we're, we're quite far from that actually. Sorry, sorry to disappoint. So, without screwing around, <laughs> back to it, I suppose. So we got a few components. Now we got a terrain. We got our player, main camera, and a directional light. Okay, it's operational now. We could actually walk around, move around, jump around, and whatever. Everything appears to be working in order. So, let's actually create our walls now. We're going to encompass this terrain in walls. So, we're going to go to game object over here. You can do this, you can do this in multiple ways, honestly. I'm just going to use cubes. It's more convenient for me. I'm more used to it. So, we're going to create a cube. Okay. Let's rename it while we're at it. Um, outer, outer walls, okay. And then we're gonna alter it a little bit. So if you remember from our first tutorial, we talked about moving around in the actual game view or the editor, whatever it's called, and um, altering the shapes of these cubes and whatnot through these components at the top here, the top left, so you could scale it to the X, Y, and Z axis is like this. Okay, scale it in multiple ways, rotate it, and whatever. Okay, so we're just gonna do that, and we're gonna create relatively thin walls out of that, like so. Okay, nothing too fat, too thin. And we're gonna scale it. So we're gonna try to make nice walls out of this. Okay, make sure it is actually touching the terrain because the last thing you want is to walk off the edge by accident. That could prove problematic. And using the tools you've learned from the last tutorials or the previous tutorials that we've had, just scale it appropriately, like so. Okay, make sure you're not too close to it because if you are too close to the cube, it can make using the rec tool right over here difficult like ungrabbable as you see here. So make sure you are a fair distance away to actually use this tool most effectively. So we got our first wall. <clears throat> While we're at it, let's apply our texture to it. Okay, so every cube, every game object here that we have comes with one of these things, kind of a def default material, this gray, quite ugly, quite boring, whatnot. We don't want that. We're gonna take our tiles Okay, just in our inventory here, I suppose. And drag and drop it onto the cube itself. Okay. And then we create this abomination. Okay, let's just drop this down, see exactly what's going on with our textures. 
So I'm not going to go too, uh, into too much depth with uh, the actual components of the texture because honestly, I am not even familiar with them. I've never really done too much research for it. But for the most part, the albedo is basically our main texture in this case, our tiles, plain, boring, and whatever. And you could alter the outer color of it using the little color selector or whatever it's called right there. Uh, we're going to leave it white. We're going to leave it as the normal amount. Metallic is kind of what it sounds like. It makes it look more metalish, darker and whatnot. Smoothness, honestly, one of my favorite components here. Shows how smooth it will be. So if we make it uh, maximum smoothness, one, if we go to our directional light and alter the rotational values. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show this for demonstration. There we go. You can see that it is quite literally smooth. You can see the actual light reflection, the actual point of the light there. Okay, so that's basically what smoothness is. Uh, we're not going to want it to. We're not going to want to keep it at max because it does become quite bothersome, if, especially if you have more like components in the scene. Normal map is quite literally what we just did on the floor here, our terrain. It causes the texture to bump out. Okay, to kind of shoot out at you a little bit more, become more realistic and whatnot. Height map, um, I don't know. <laughs> Oculish, Oculision is, if I remember right, honestly, don't quote me on this, but it is relatively, it is kind of like, it encompasses the environment and it gathers shaders from the environment to better create a more realistic version of that texture, if that makes any sense. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. I never used Oculision or Detail Mask. So we're just going to leave those alone. But we have the tiling and the offsets here. Okay, so tiling is just, you're tiling it. Do make sure your texture is seamless though, because if you do tile it, you will see those annoying ass um, overlaps. Okay, we definitely don't want that. So for tiling, uh, if we make that a five, you'll see it literally tiles. So let's try five by five. That's way too much. We want it to be relatively similar to the floor let's see if we can make that oh it's too little actually let's see 10 by 10 uh 13 by 13 i suppose we could leave it at 13 by 13 it seems reasonable Okay, we're going to take our tiles now, uh, the height map or the normal map over here. If, you, if you're lost, if you're back at some random folder, just click on the assets here to the very left. Go to assets, okay, go to textures and go to the file that you just created and click on the cube. Make sure it's always selected if you want to alter the settings of that cube in particular. And drag and drop the normal map on the normal map section. And you'll see right away that the normal map applies and you get that bumpiness to it so if we play our game if we get into it we have a wall a beautiful ass wall oh and you can kind of see that shininess apply as well if you, don't know if you could see that but near the middle you kind of see a little bit of a and you see if we increase the smoothness you can see that much much better right there it looks kind of wet you could say so we have our wall, we have our first wall, let's get out of there. And do keep in mind, um, whoops, my bad. Do keep in mind to be careful if you do uh, create alterations while in game. So for example, me altering my smoothness. For some parts, when you unplay, like when you get out of play mode, play mode, it will go back to the original settings before you went into play mode. But in some cases, I'm not sure exactly in which cases, but if you do alterations, so for example, that smoothness here, it will keep the smoothness the way it was when you altered it, if that makes any sense. So make sure you know if you are testing certain options in the game, because sometimes when you get out of play mode, they will still be changed the way you change them in game. So it's probably not relevant in our case, but... Just a little bit of a heads up there. So we got one wall. Let's create more now. So we're gonna click it. Control C, Control V, copy and paste it, or just right click and duplicate. Okay, so we got one wall. 
And we're going to put it to the other side now. So we're just going to duplicate the walls now and put them side by side and create the actual walls. Oh, you see a little crack there? We don't want that. Let's make it a little closer there. We do not want to fall off the map in any case. Okay, once again, control V. You want another one, rotate it. In this case, if you want a perfect 90 degree, just look at where the, <clears throat> for the settings of this cube in particular here, or this wall, look at where the rotational values are changing. So once, if I rotate it like this, you'll see in the settings, this value, this Y axis value here is changing. Okay, so once again, rotate it, it's changing. So that you know that if that change you're doing there is altering the Y axis, make that 90 degrees. Perfect 90 degrees flat. We're gonna keep things as square as possible here and just move it. Because when you do parent things, you wanna make sure that the rotations are as square and as precise as possible. Otherwise they will distort as shown in the, my previous videos. And it could become quite aggressive. Okay. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. It's just so it covers everything. And one more. Control C, Control V. And let's move it to the other side. Nice and covered, nice and covered. Perfect. Now let's parent them. So we're going to highlight all of these. Okay, by holding control and simply click each one of them or click number three, hold shift and number one, just highlight everything and drag them and drop them into the outer wall. Okay, or one of the walls, whichever one you want. Okay, or if you wanna be safe, which I do recommend, so let's go back, create a game object, create empty. And let's just rename this to, whoops. It's so hard to change the name that way. Okay, so we change the name to outer wall main. Okay, name it whatever you want, then highlight every single wall now and just drag it into there. Whoops. There we go. It's much better to do it this way because if you are altering the rotational values, it can prove troublesome in the future. And besides, if you do want to end up altering one of the walls, if you needed to alter the main one that everything is parented to, changing the values will change everyone else's values, so it becomes quite annoying, honestly. So try to keep it habit to create object, create empty, and then parent things to the empty object, because you don't generally play around with the empty object, you generally play around with the actual things you're parenting to that empty object, if that makes any sense. All right, let me just see the time here for this video. Oh, damn, I didn't even start my timer. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'm not quite sure what time we're at here, but we'll just go finish off this cube. So once again, we have textured virtually everything now. Uh, we're going to leave the ceiling alone just to get some visuals right now, I suppose. We're going to leave it as that. Let's see, what else can we add here to call it a video? So we have our textures. What else can we do here? Hmm. Let me see. You know what we can actually do? We, let's alter actually. Let's go to the smoothest again for all the textures. <clears throat> uh, where is it? There we go. Let's just increase the smoothness. Yeah, let's, let's try 0 0.5. Okay, you will notice for the outer walls here, they all share the same texture. So if you alter one of the textures, whoops, 0 0.50. So if we alter the uh, outer walls texture, you will notice that all of the outer walls textures have been altered because they all share the exact same texture over here. Okay, if you want to have, if you create another cube here, and you want to have the exact same tiles texture, but you want different tilings. So you want one not to be as small as these, a little bit more big. Uh, you would have to duplicate this texture and apply it and then just alter it that way. 
And then that's where the whole organizing thing comes into hand because you want to make sure things are organized if you have multiple objects with the same texture. So definitely keep that in mind. We will touch upon that a little bit more later, probably in the next video. So that's that. We altered the smoothness a little bit. Let's see how that changed things. Uh, not significantly. I suppose if we increase the directional light's intensity, that'll definitely show far more. Oh, that's way too much, yeah. Now let's leave the intensity over here at, oh, uh, let's, let's put it at 0 0.65. Oops, 0 0.65. Seems like a reasonable number. <clears throat> and let's add shadows. Let's see what that does to our scene. There we go. Uh, be wary though, if your computer is relatively weaker, keep shadows off because you will experience massive, massive lags because shadows are very, very demanding. And the last thing you want is to lag while you're actually developing a game. Okay, we got nice shadows now. make sure that we can actually run off here. Nope, perfect. Don't mind these little shadow marks. You gotta alter these in the settings. We're just not gonna worry about that right now. Oh, as you can see, if we touch the edge of the wall here, you can see that we're cutting into the actual texture or the actual cube itself. Okay, we don't want that. Let's get out of there. If you guys remember how to do that, we go to our player settings. Okay, open our player, go to its camera. And the clipping planes, alter the near clipping planes to the smallest value you could possibly do. Okay, so in that case, it would be 0 0.01. And let's make the far. So let's see how much we can make the far. This is basically how far the camera will be rendering. This is extremely important for quality or for um, optimization purposes, especially if you have many, many scenes that span a large scale. So we just wanna make it render as far as our cube spans, basically. So a thousand seemed a bit much. 250, oh, let's do 300, 300. Seems far more reasonable. So we're just gonna go to one of the edges here, make sure that we are not removing any rendering. There we go, you can see everything still, that's perfect. All right, uh, field of view, don't worry about that. You can just change that if you want, whichever way you want. Not relevant for us right now, I guess. And that is it, let's save. On, quite honestly, we should have saved probably five times <laughs> rather than at the very end here, because if it did crash, there's quite a little bit of work here to do. But we're gonna end it for there, or we're gonna end it at there. And we will continue on in the next video, which will be up the same time as this video, most likely, just probably minutes later and we'll continue in the next video we're actually going to start creating the platforms itself that we can jump on and we will touch upon animations in the next one because we didn't quite have time to do it in this one at all so that's that once again we have our main walls here we have our floor we have our first person character in moving condition play around with it alter the walk speed run speed jump amounts k and see if you could kind of find that threshold where you're happy with the whole player's performance of the player's uh, attributes, how fast he runs and whatever. Uh, play around with the textures, I suppose. Uh, experiment with the normal map, the smoothness, metallic. Okay, maybe do some online research on the Oculus and detailed masks and whatnot, but generally not important in our case. Play around with the scaling, moving around in the actual view. Okay, you want to be very, very proficient at moving around in the view because it's quite important, honestly. You can't really add anything to that. <laughs> so yeah, once again, that's it. I'm going to save one more time. And I will see you all in the next one.